Hello and welcome to today's Dwelling in the Word. If you're like me, you know exactly where you were on this very day, 19 years ago, 9-11-2001, when you heard the news that the Twin Towers in New York City were under attack and that America was under a terrorist attack. Today we remember the victims of these attacks, but also the fallen heroes, the men and women who sacrificed their very lives to try to help and to save those who had been attacked. And I think that on a day like today, perhaps we especially need to hear the word of God, the words of Jesus that speak into every tragic event in our lives and in our world, every act of violence, every act of hostility, because the only hope that we have in our world for peace, for a lasting peace, is God's love to prevail over the hatred and hostility that Satan has been sowing into our world from the beginning. So let's hear together the word of God, a conversation between Jesus and the Pharisees as they are attempting to discredit Jesus and his mission of love into our world, his mission to accept and welcome sinners and to call them away from the darkness and into the light and out of hatred and hostility and shame and into a world filled with love, peace, and joy, the kingdom of God, come into our very midst. So let's hear together the word of God, Matthew 22, verses 34 through 40. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments, the word of God and the words of Christ. Earlier in Matthew's account, the gospel of Jesus, we hear Jesus saying that all of the law is important right down to the least stroke of a pen. Don't break the very least of these commandments, Jesus said, Matthew 5, verses 17 through 20. Translation is this, simple. Every commandment is important. Yet even the language of greatest and least is already introduced to us in these words. There are commandments that are greater, more important than others. And Jesus here, and this, his response to this question, which is the greatest, he points us to the greatest two commandments of them all. And we see that in these two commandments, love, love is everything. Now, deep down, we all know that this is true. There's nothing greater than love. God is love, and he wants us to know his love. Your highest priority in life is to follow in the footsteps of Jesus by living a life of love. This is the word of God in Ephesians 5, verses 1 and 2. In Luke's account of the gospel, it's interesting that the Pharisee who asked Jesus this question, then attempts to justify himself. And he goes on to ask Jesus, well, exactly who is my neighbor? Jesus goes on to tell the story of a good Samaritan. And what we see in this story is that our neighbor may be a stranger, someone we have never met before. Our neighbor may be someone we have been told to avoid or taught to hate and despise. Our neighbor may be the last person on earth that we think about when we think about who our neighbors are. Your neighbor very well might be your enemy. This is the kind of neighbor Jesus describes in this parable. The Samaritans in the days of Jesus fit this description perfectly for the Jews. Jesus chose such a person to be the hero of his story in order to confront us with our spiritual blindness, 
when it comes to the self-imposed cultural boundaries of our love compared to the boundless love of God freely given to all. I urge you today to embrace the words of Christ. Second only to the command to love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind is this command from God that you love this unexpected neighbor and all of your neighbors all over the world and all over town, no matter who they are, what you have heard about them, or even what they have done to you in the past. Love these neighbors as you love yourself. Don't withhold your love and compassion from your neighbors. Love them with the boundless love of God that now lives within you.